Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into an absolutely exclusive prediction video where I will be giving 25 different bold predictions for this upcoming college football season. I want to get this out before the start of week zero. I'm filming this on Friday. Week zero is tomorrow, guys. As for my predictions, if I have your team doing bad, guys, please do not get triggered. These are just a little fun thing I like to do. We'll see how many of these I get right, and I'm doing 25 just because, I don't know, like AP Top 25, there's 25 teams that get ranked. That's just what I thought. So, guys, starting with number 25, Notre Dame loses at least three games, finishes outside the top 15 in the final poll. I don't love Jack Cohn. I think Notre Dame has a surprisingly difficult schedule. They're due for kind of a down year. I see at least three losses for Notre Dame. Moving on to 24, Texas A&M is irrelevant, underwhelms. And what I really mean by irrelevant, I think Texas A&M loses early and then doesn't really get talked about. I was debating possibly having Texas A&M beating Bama because I think it's going to happen at some point. Texas A&M, they're at home this year against Bama. Bama, obviously, with a first-year quarterback, although Texas A&M is breaking in a new quarterback as well. I'm just, I know Texas A&M has a decently easy schedule. I understand the SEC West is brutal, but per SEC West standards, it's a decently easier schedule. They're a really tough game, obviously, versus Bama. But I just think they're going to lose the game early, and they're going to kind of be irrelevant. They're really not going to be in the playoff picture. I definitely think they'll finish the season, probably a top 15 team, maybe go on a run later. But early on, I think they lose early, and they're just, they're just a, a relevant team. I know a lot of people think they're going to contend this year. Number 23, Buffalo beats Coastal Carolina in week three. Oh, I love this. I love the Mac. Buffalo they did have a little bit of a transfer portal exodus, if you will, but I still like them. They were a really good team last year. Everyone keeps talking about, ooh, Ball State and Penn State. Guys, let me give you a little key. Penn State is going to annihilate Ball State. Ball State lost everyone. I know they won the MAC last year. People are overrating Ball State. They're underrating Buffalo, and I think people are overrating Coastal Carolina. I've seen a lot of people say Coastal Carolina is guaranteed to go undefeated. They do have an easy schedule, but I have them losing to a tough Buffalo team. Week three, number 22, scouts fall in love with Carson Strong. Draw comparisons to Josh Allen. Both have huge arms. Nevada, you know, Josh Allen from Wyoming, similar schools. I just think this is a match made in heaven. I think Carson Strong is a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. I don't think Nevada has a ton of, you know, team success, you know, kind of like Josh Allen with Wyoming. They didn't have a lot of team success, but the scouts are going to absolutely fall in love with Carson Strong. He will be a top 10 pick. They will draw comparisons to Josh Allen. Number 21, Iowa wins the Big Ten West. I'm not overly high on uh, Wisconsin, Iowa returns a lot of talent. I like them to win the Big Ten West and face Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. You know, we've kind of had this thing where it's been Wisconsin, then Northwestern, then Wisconsin, then Northwestern. Northwestern returns nobody. They actually return the least amount. I Actually, second least. Ohio State returns the least amount of returning starters when it comes to the Big Ten. But Northwestern only returns seven. They only have seven returning starters, which surprises me because you think the COVID year, there'd be a lot of five-year seniors with that Northwestern team. That's surprising, but I expect Northwestern not to be in contention at all. Iowa, solid team, returns a lot, veteran leadership, uh, and they're a team that kind of every four or five years comes out of the woodwork and really contends in the Big Ten West. Moving on to number 20, Penn State bounces back, wins 10 games, and finishes in the top 10. I absolutely love this. I understand Penn State started the year last year 0-5. We understand Sean Clifford has his limitations, but this is going to be a really good defense. I love James Franklin. This is a really stable program. They're back to recruiting really well this year, um, and I think they win 10 games, finish top 10, and come in second in the Big Ten East to Ohio State. Moving on to number 19, Miami ends the season unranked, which is going to be really hard to do due to how bad I expect the ACC to be this year. I think the ACC is terrible. There's I got a prediction on that coming up, but Miami, I'm not buying it. I've said this several times before. I think they're completely overranked, and I think they've kind of been hyped up due to that week one matchup against Alabama. Here's a newsflash. Alabama, last time I checked, 
18 and a half point favorites week one. How is this a big game? Everyone's saying Miami, Alabama is a big game. It's not. It's going to be a blowout. I understand Alabama's breaking in Bryce Young. He's a former five star, number three, you know, top two overall recruit in college football. He'll be fine. And Alabama will go on and win by 24. I don't. I think the Miami hype comes from ESPN trying to market that Alabama Miami Week One matchup. You've got De'Aaron King, who's a good college quarterback, absolutely returning from a major injury that he suffered in the bowl game last year. In the bowl game, so the last game of the season, he's not going to have a lot of time to you know you know break in through that you know awful injury he had. I'm concerned about Miami. I think they lose four games. It's going to be tough for them to really be unranked due to how easy the ACC is, but I could see it happening. Moving on to number 18, Texas hammers Louisiana week one. Bijan Robinson runs for 200 plus yards. I love Bijan Robinson, ladies and gentlemen. Texas apparently still hasn't named their starting quarterback. I think it's going to be Casey Thompson, but they still haven't officially named it. Sarkeesian hasn't. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal week one match- matchup for Texas. Louisiana ranked 23rd. Solid football program, right? Mid major. We love it. They're a cute little program. But Texas has so much more talent. It's a great opportunity for Texas to show out and pound Louisiana. And I think they will. And I think they'll get a lot of hype because of it. B. John Robinson, he's absurd. They, yeah, again, they still haven't named a quarterback. They're going to rely on Bijan a lot week one. I like them winning that game big. Iowa State loses at least three games, finishes outside the top 15. So kind of like the same thing as Notre Dame. Iowa State really not used to all these expectations. There's really a number of key factors working against Iowa State this season. I think the biggest one being the fact that the Big 12 is a deep league. I really like the Big 12 this year. I like a team like TCU. I like Texas to, to you know be a contender. I love Oklahoma. Obviously, a lot of people do their rank second. I think it's a surprisingly tough league. It kind of sneaks up on you. The Big 12 this year, deep league. Iowa State, at least three losses. They also have a non-conference game, obviously, against their rival, Iowa, that they could lose as well. So I have them at least three losses. This is a program, they're not, you know, they're not used to these crazy expectations. They're normally the program that sneaks up on other teams. Now that they have these expectations, they're, you know, AP, you know, preseason top 10 team, I think they struggle a little bit. I think they lose at least three games and are outside the top 15. FSU beats Notre Dame at home week one. This is a Sunday night special NBC game. If you guys don't know, I think it's an eight o'clock start time. FSU is at home against Notre Dame and Jack Cohn. And I'm not high on Notre Dame this year. I think FSU snipes them. They get them week one. Notre Dame breaking in a new quarterback. I get he's a veteran, but FSU, it's going to be crazy. Their fan base is going to go wild at home. There's going to be a lot of energy in that stadium. And I think they get the upset over Notre Dame week one. Moving on to number 15, the Pac-12 finishes with no teams ranked in the top eight, but six teams ranked inside the top 25. Right now, the Pac-12 currently has zero teams inside the top 10, but they have five teams ranked. You've got a lot of good, but not great teams in the Pac-12. You've got a deep league, I would say, with teams like Utah, with teams like Washington, Oregon, USC, Arizona State. This is a deep league, but there's no super great teams. That's why I say there's going to be no teams inside the top eight. Even the winner of the uh, you know Pac-12 championship, I don't think is going to be ranked inside the top eight. But you're going to have six teams in the top 25, so a really deep league. Number 14, Alabama loses to Florida early, but then wins out. So yeah, again, I was debating Alabama potentially losing to Texas A&M. I don't think they lose to Texas A&M. I think they win at College Station, although that is a tough place to play. And again, it's one of those things where I think Texas A&M is going to break through one of these years and beat Bama. Could it be this year with a first-year starting quarterback and Texas A&M gets him at home? Maybe. But I'm going with a random early season loss on the road at Florida for Alabama. And then they went out all the way up to the SEC Championship game. That's my prediction there. Moving on to number 13, it's going to be Utah versus Washington in the Pac-12 Championship game. I love both of those teams. I think, again, the Pac-12 is going to be a complete cluster. It's going to come down to the final week. You're going to have Oregon in in contention. You're going to have USC in contention. There's going to be a lot of teams. Teams, obviously, uh, Utah, Washington, a lot of really good, but no great teams in the Pac-12 this year. It's going to be a massive cluster to see who who ends up in the Pac-12 championship. I've got Utah returning tons of starters. They've got a veteran transfer quarterback in Corey Brewer, who's transferring from Baylor. You know, Kyle Whittingham, big believer in him as a coach. Good defense, returning a lot of guys. And then Washington should have a phenomenal defense. 
Really interesting football this year in the Pac-12. Number 12, Bijan Robinson wins the September Heisman, finishes third in the end. So his you know final Heisman race, he finishes third, but he wins the September Heisman. We all know the Heisman, you know, who leads early. That's kind of the September Heisman winner. I think Bijan Robinson with a huge week one against Louisiana catapults, gets a lot of hype from people, then kind of slows down a little bit later in the season, but finishes third overall in the Heisman race. Moving on to number 11, Indiana loses five games, stumbles into bowl season. Indiana has a brutal schedule, Big Ten schedule. They also have a non-conference game um, at uh, or versus Cincinnati at home, and they're also at Western Kentucky. They go on the road to Western Kentucky in a non-conference game. Very weird. It's kind of like Oklahoma going to Tulane week one. Very weird. You think these teams, the bigger teams, would be hosting the the group of five teams, but not the case. Indiana just don't love it. Don't think they can, you know, replicate what they had last year. I think, you know, the you know the way the season happened with the virus. I think that had a lot to do with it. I don't love them. I like their coach, you know, Tom Allen, really good coach. But I see them losing five games, being seven and five, going into a bowl. That's a complete letdown of a year for them, unranked. Moving on to number ten, Michigan beats Michigan State. Finishes 7-5, and five. so Michigan is actually playing in East Lansing this year, uh, but I kind of have them, you know, going 7-5, and five, being whatever, not really that good. I know their fans wouldn't accept, wouldn't be too happy with a 7-5 and five season, but I think that's pretty much what people are projecting, 7-5. and five. I originally had them 8-4, and four, but I brought it down to 7-5. and five. I think they do uh, get J.J. McCarthy, their, you know, true freshman five-star, a few starts towards the end of the season. We'll see if they end up doing that. Number nine, the ACC is the worst Power Five conference by far. Virginia Tech finishes inside the top 20. So I think due to the fact on how bad the ACC is going to be, you're going to see a team like Virginia Tech, who if they were in any other conference, they'd probably lose four or five games. Due to the fact they're in the ACC, nothing against Virginia Tech, but they're just not very good. Due to the fact that they're in the ACC, I think they win a few big games in that conference. Maybe they go you know, into the bowl season with only three losses and finish inside the top 20, along with, obviously, we expect out of the ACC, Clemson to be a top five team, and then North Carolina, and then some people think Miami's going to be in there. I don't think Miami's going to be in there. I have them out. Moving on to number eight, Oklahoma. This may not, okay, this is not a bold prediction, but I have to add this. I, I had to throw it in there. Oklahoma finally wins a playoff game. No, it's not a bold prediction, but I had to put it in there. They're currently 0-4 in the playoff era, uh, but they are ranked second in the preseason AP poll. So really not a bold prediction, but they I do have them finally winning a playoff game and making the national championship. Number seven, TCU gets ranked midseason, finishes top 20. Really a fan of TCU. Again, the Big 12, really deep conference this year. You've got teams like TCU. You've got teams like Oklahoma State. You know, obviously the Iowa States of the world, the Texas is the Oklahoma's deep conference this year. And I think TCU is going to have a really good year under Gary Patterson, really underrated coach. They've kind of been laying in the weeds the past few years, lost five, six games. I think they break through and have a really nice year for their program, finishing inside the top 20, moving on. Guys, I keep I, I keep calling at Notre Dame. I'm sorry. Jack Cohn gets benched by week seven. Uh, yeah, I'm just not high on Notre Dame. I'm not high on Jack Cohn this season. Um, again, nothing against Notre Dame fans or anything like that. I think they have a great storied program, things like that. It's just this year I'm not high on them. You know, I'm an Ohio State fan. If somebody wants to say, well, Ohio State's going to lose three games this year due to their terrible secondary, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. You know, it's just like this isn't serious, guys. I'm just making these picks. There's no, no reason to get angry about it. But Jack Cohn, I just don't think he's very good, and I think – Notre Dame fans are going to be in for a rude awakening when it comes to the quarterback position. Moving on to number five, uh, Nebraska wins eight games. People start liking Scott Frost again. So the reason, this is part of the reason I had to get this video out so quickly. Nebraska plays tomorrow in a week zero matchup against Illinois. My, my funny thing is most people are going to be seeing this video probably after Nebraska faces Illinois. Imagine if Nebraska loses to Illinois. They're only seven point favorites, but I just, I have a soft spot for Nebraska. They have a great fan base. Um, you know, it's just a rabid fan base and I really like them. I hope they win eight games. They've got a veteran quarterback, four year starter, Adrian Martinez. So we'll have to see what happens. Scott Frost. I like the dude. I don't know if he's a great coach, but, um, I have them winning eight games in the big 10 West this year. 
Uh, Georgia has an under the radar year with with a poor schedule. Wins the SEC championship. Yeah, I've seen people say you know JT Daniels could win the Heisman. I think JT Daniels has zero chance of winning the Heisman, and the reason is just due to how bad Georgia's schedule is. Um, they are an you know SEC schedules are normally very tough. I'm not saying they're not tough, but Georgia's schedule. If you guys look at it after the Week One Clemson game, it's very bad. And I just think Georgia. No one's really going to talk about them because there's just no big matchups this year for Georgia after week one. You get done with week one, that's it for Georgia until the SEC championship game. So whether or not they win week one, I think they beat every SEC team in the regular season and head off to win the SEC championship game. I don't know if they'll beat Clemson. I slightly lean towards I think Clemson's going to win a close, low-scoring game. But either way, again, guys, Georgia is just going to be, for most of this year, they're just going to be under the radar. Nobody's going to be talking about them. They're just not facing anyone. There's no big matchups for Georgia this year in, in terms of the regular season after week one when they face Clemson in a, new, in a neutral site game. Number three, C.J. Strout wins the Heisman. Alave and Wilson, both All-Americans. So this is one I went back and forth on. I love C.J. Stroud, and you look at Ohio State's receivers and how they're going to help him. Guys, I want to say I did have a vision of C.J. Stroud's final line at the end of the season. I've got him at 42 passing touchdowns and six interceptions. I've had that vision for a while. I don't know if it's going to you know, happen, but just think 42 passing touchdowns, six interceptions. I'd say he probably gets six or 700 yards rushing and another eight or nine rushing touchdowns because C.J. Stroud is more mobile than Justin Fields was. We'll see how... I think... He's a very accurate quarterback, too. I know that's kind of a question with him. We know he's mobile. How accurate is he? I think he's a pretty accurate quarterback. I've seen him in the spring game. Uh, so C.J. Stroud, I love. And then Alave and Wilson, I think both at least 900-plus yards. Both All-Americans. Again, the receivers, Jeremy Ruckert, the tight end. You've got, you know, we've got a stable of, you know, group of running backs and a really veteran offensive line really going to help C.J. Stroud thrive this year as a first-year starting quarterback. I will say I was going to make another bowl prediction about Ohio State. I'm not doing it. My other bold prediction was going to be Ohio State loses week one at Minnesota and then wins out. I'm not doing it. I might just, I don't know. It's just a nervous game. Thursday night at Minnesota, veteran quarterback, Ohio State secondary isn't very good. You know, C.J. Stroud hasn't thrown a pass in college football yet. I, I'm not making that prediction, but that Minnesota game scares me for Ohio State. It scares me. I love the fact that it's Thursday night. I think that's so sweet, but it's a scary game. I'm sorry it is, for me at least. Number two, Old Miss averages the highest yards per game among Power 5. So that's just something a little cool. I know I'm not the only one that's really high on this Old Miss offense, but I think not only is their offense going to be really good, but their defense is so bad to where they're going to be in shootouts and they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. So it's going to facilitate really high scoring games, a lot of yardage for Old Miss offense. Everyone's high on them. I think they could win seven or eight games. They just have a bad defense, unfortunately, and I think that's going to cost them, but they're going to be one of the most entertaining teams to watch when it comes to group of five offenses in college football. And number one, Spencer Rattler is the number one overall pick in the 2022 draft compared to Mahomes. I mean, I'm just warning you guys right now, there will be an absurd amount of scouts or people in the media that compare Spencer Rattler to Mahomes. His game is very similar. I'm not saying he's as good or better than Mahomes, but his arm, his movement, his mobility, his body structure, it's all very similar to Patrick Mahomes. I'm just telling you guys that right now. And there will be a lot of people. Kind of like the whole Carson Strong, uh, Josh Allen thing. I can kind of see these things. I know scouts are going to compare Carson Strong to Josh Allen. I know scouts are going to compare Patrick Mahomes or Spencer Rattler to Patrick Mahomes. Also, I do think Sam Howell will be a top 10 pick, but I do think Rattler will go number one overall when it comes to the 2022 draft. Guys, those were just 25 sort of rapid fire college football predictions. The season is starting tomorrow, although it is only week zero. There's really only one big game tomorrow, and that is Nebraska-Illinois. I have Nebraska winning eight games, so let's hope they're able to beat Illinois tomorrow. That'd be funny if they lost, honestly. I'd, I'd laugh about it, but it is what it is, guys. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.